Hi everyone, this is Sagar Shah and I have a big challenge for you today. You are playing against the top seed of the Aerofloat Open, Artemiev. Vladislav Artemiev who is rated 2728. You have the white pieces, you are in the shoes of Vaibhav Suri. And this is the sixth round of the tournament. I'm going to ask you eight questions. Okay, and you have to tell me at the end of it in the comment section below how much did you score? Okay, so are you ready? Let's begin. Vaibhav opened the game with 1e4 and Artemiev played c5, knight f3, d6. It was all looking like it will go to the knight off. When Vaibhav played the move f3, now, this is a shrewd move order because if you play a6, white does have the opportunity to take it into some different territory like say c4 and uh, you no longer get the knight off. So our team here played knight c6, transposing the game into a classical opening, classical Sicilian, knight b3, bishop e7, bishop e3, castles, queen d2. Very normal and natural. And here came the move a5. Black says I have not wasted a tempo in the knight off with the move a6. So I might as well make good use of it with the move a5. Okay, a5. And the plan is to hassle this knight on b3 with a4. Then even get in further and sort of weaken the dark squares in the position. Bishop went to b5. Very logical move, stopping a4 as well. And black played <coughs> knight a7. This is my first question to you. What would you do here as white? Okay, so you don't really want to move your bishop from here because it allows a4. Or let's say if you move it off, uh, black can you know go back knight c6 start preparing a4 or even prepare with bishop e6 or bd7 try for b5 and so in this position it is very important to give up your powerful bishop for this knight just so that you can stabilize the queen side completely and therefore the right move is bishop into a7 all those who found this move well done it means you are very flexible in your thinking not at all easy to give up your really powerful bishop. All those who are Sicilian players would know that this bishop is really important. But in this case, because black has created a weakness here, you can give it up. Rook a7 and now it's your move. What would you do here as white? This is the second question for the second point. What would you do? Okay, so long castle is a fine move. And you get a full point if you do that. But also better I would say. And more solid is a4. And this is what Vaibhav played. So he is fixing the queen side. Bishop e6. And now long castles. Well the main idea of long castle is that you immediately stop d5. And the king is not weak here. So anyway it's a, it's a good move. Knight e8. Now, the knight is coming to c7. It wants to get rid of this bishop here. How would you continue as white? Now, one of the most important things to look at is the entire board. You cannot really focus on just one side. Okay, knight is coming to c7 and then you do something to prevent it. And then next move comes bishop g5 and you lose the queen. So it's important to spot it and play king b1. Uh, you can even find the move queen d3 or queen e2. Both are good moves and would get you the full point, the third point. Uh, but it was important to spot it. So king b1 was played, knight c7. And now for the fourth point and the key move here, what would you play here as white? So white has sort of his bishop on the best square, knight is controlling d5 and b5, you don't really want to move it. This knight doesn't really have a great future right now, but it's okay on b3. Bringing this rook in to e1 makes no sense. 
So definitely you have to do something which creates some play and Vaibhav found the move f4 and to all those who found this move, great job. Because now you could play f5 at some point, you can even threaten to take here. And overall this move makes a lot of sense. Black took ef, queen takes f4. Now bishop b3, maybe this was not necessary but already uh, white has a clear cut plan now to double down the d file and put more pressure on the d6 pawn. Oops. So bishop b3, cb3, knight b5, knight b5 and rook a6. This was played and so now my fifth point to you, what would you play here as white? See, you have a better position against Artemiev and it's important to keep control and that's the reason why you play the move rook to d5, fixing the light squares and getting your other rook into the game. So that's very simple but at the same time very effective. You will see how Vaibhav in spite of being nearly 130 low points lower than his opponent is making all the logical moves and putting so much pressure. Rook c6, rook h d1, queen b6 and now once again comes a time when you have improved all your pieces. You will see that all the pieces are in good squares. So just like how we saw here that it was necessary to do something with f4. Similarly, we reach this position where it's necessary to do something. So white to move and this is for your sixth point. What would you play here? Yes, the knight is well placed on uh, b5, but you can do much better by taking it to f5. Knight d4 is an excellent move. Taking this pawn on d6 makes very little sense. First of all, uh, black can just win the pawn on b3 and it doesn't inspire confidence. But knight d4 attacks the rook on c6 and threatens knight f5. So rook c5 and now knight jumps into f5, bishop f6 and now for the seventh point, now it's time, you, you know you are playing a bit generally until now, you want to fix the light squares, you want to keep your pieces on good squares but now it's time to calculate what would you play here as white. So if you play the move rook d6 after queen b3 you are worse. It gives black a lot of counterplay and b2 is hanging. If you take knight d6, still queen into b3 is very strong. So the right move is queen into d6 and Vaibhav noticed that after queen into b3, he has a very powerful move. Not that you take this rook here because b2 is hanging and the king is checkmated. But what's the move? Excellent. When you take the pawn on d6, you have to spot queen into f8, king into f8 and rook d8, which ends in checkmate. So queen d6 gives you the full point only if you had seen this mate. Okay, rook d5 was played in the game and now for the last point, because after this move, it becomes clear that you are winning the game. So you have an option here to take on b6, you have an option to take on d5, you have another option to play queen into d5. The right move is queen takes d5, excellent move, uh, keeping control, queen b6 is not at all bad and if you uh, calculated this, it's good job, but it gives black some counterplay and here you have to find a move like knight h6 check. Now if he takes, you take on f6 and b slightly better. If he goes king h8, then you find the move queen c5 attacking this, threatening knight f7, knight d6, later e5. And this gives uh, white a winning advantage after rook b2, uh, king a3, rook e8, knight f7 and knight d6. Anyway, uh, but queen b6, rook d1, king a2, somehow gives black chances of survival and queen d5 is just so clean you are a pawn up very simply you have great pieces you are defending d3 d3 and everything is great 
queen f2 and now you must see now you have already eight points are done uh, let me know in the comments how many points you scored from the eight but what you must learn now is how why bow converts this extra pawn into a win he first plays rook d2 queen g1 gets his king to safety and after queen into h2 he takes the correct pawn queen into a5 taking on b7 is possible also not a bad move but taking a5 is better because somehow this pawn is much more advanced later can play a5 and make another weakness here uh, also queen b7 g6 there are some specific issues like knight d6 bishop g5 attacking the rook uh, on d2 and also this knight is uh, hanging so with the queen on a5 bg5 is no longer possible queen f4 queen d5 now this is again a centralizing move saving everything g6 knight jumps to d6 b6 and once again you know this is not for any points but what would you play here i think many times we jump to do something very quickly and we go something like knight c4 and then the opponent plays rook d2 and he starts getting counter play this would be the worst thing that you can do so first Weibo played rook e2 threatening e5 if you play bishop e5 now knight c4 comes with a tempo because you can win the bishop and if you play queen e5 of course the exchange of queens is very much welcome for white so rook e2 is a nice move and then after queen f1 was played just rook c2 and bg7 e5 blocking the bishop in h5 now usually when you are up in material try to exchange of pieces rook c8 was a fine move exchanges b6 is hanging and after queen f2 now b4 you will see that in order to convert this advantage you need to take a bit of risk because your king will get slightly exposed if you want to start pushing your pawns but that's just the part of the game uh, Weibo was very confident about this gave up a pawn but pushed a5 h4 he got his knight back to c3 and once again b3 good move if you take queen into f7 a small lapse in concentration and the game ends in a draw now you can't play knight a3 because a5 hangs and you if you play king b1 then queen d1 queen a4 is just a draw so king h7 b3 queen d1 uh, queen e1 a6 queen f2 king a3 bishop f8 b4 king h8 knight d6 queen c2 knight into f7 king h7 knight g5 king h6 knight f7 and now knight came back and the interesting part is that here the pawn will queen but you need to calculate so a7 was a very good move because often we are afraid of this check and the king getting close to being mated but as it turns out the king is just running ahead uh, and it goes to c5 to c6 and now knight c7 and game was over so Vaibhav Suri managed to beat one of the best players in the world currently Artemiev biggest Russian talent they say and he did it with quite flawless technique throughout the game he hardly made any mistakes i would say none and i hope that you enjoyed this challenge where you had to score eight points as uh, as i mentioned previously let me know in the comments how many points you scored and if you enjoyed this form of presentation i'll be back with more such tests this is sagar shah signing off